Hello, my name is Ulster, and welcome back to another YouTube reaction. I know I haven't done this much, but, um, yeah, I just thought I would watch a uh, new Nostalgia Critic with you guys. You know, he's been so funny over the years, and I've decided to watch uh, another video of his, which is Heart and Here's the Who. Now, Dog Worker himself has told us, or talked at least in length about uh, how he wouldn't do a review about this, but I'm thinking this is going to be like a mini review slash editorial on it and I really don't mind it because you know uh, I do want to kind of see him tackle it and uh, for myself I really enjoyed uh, Harden Hears the Who because that one you know I, I really enjoyed the um, a the animated uh, style of Harden Hears the Who I know that's why uh, Lorex did so good because you know they borrowed a lot of animation from Harden Hears the Who and uh, you know it was still an interesting kind of movie you know the message was there I thought it was done pretty good um, but of course there were some flaws here here and there um, of course it, it's nice to uh, see Steve Carell and um, Jim Carrey work together and uh, it's funny that Jim Carrey is now two characters in the Sue's universe you know he's uh, Grinch and uh, he's also Harden um, so it's interesting to to note here um, I also think that you know he's he's mo mostly gonna nitpick and it, it's understandable you know uh, he has gone on to say that you know of all the Seuss uh, you know universe Seuss cinematic universe uh, Harden Here's a Fool is the least terrible and I definitely understand that yes the anime part was really really cringy but I, I, I digress. That was just stupid for me. The, the kid going, uh, it was particularly weird. But I was like, yeah, I, you know, you're trying to get a running gag, which doesn't really work. So that's all fine and good. But maybe he's going to talk about that as well. Anyway, I've rambled on enough. Um, so yeah, let's just jump right in and let's go and see what Nostalgia Critic thinks about uh, Heart and Here. So let's go. The nostalgia critic. I, I remember, remember it, so you don't, don't have to. It's no secret the Dr. Seuss films have had a bit of a checkered past. Dirty ho. Tess a two bell. Pretty goddamn bad, apparently. But the one film that everyone agrees is good, the least yeah, bad yeah. is Horton Hears a Who. Starring Jim Carrey and Steve Carell, because that worked so great before. <laughs> the film was based on the hit book that I, led well, to an like underperforming box office. Over time, though, it's gotten a reputation as the closest thing to a good Dr. Seuss movie we ever got. Well, I'm here to ask, is it really? I mean, granted, we all know Seuss needs more anime references, emo kids, and whatever the hell this is. <laughs> yeah. But is it good enough to count as a decent movie, or is it just uh, the least painful? Well, I think it's time to look over what was ironically Both. overlooked, a film about being overlooked. So let's look it over. This is my review of Horton Hears a Who. It starts off pretty enough with a colorful and creative environment, as mm -hmm. Jim Carrey, thank God not covered in makeup to look <laughs> like the character this time, is teaching a class of ugly about the various animals in the forest. The leaf bug. No, oh, they're on me! Ah, ah, look at <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, to yeah, note, to note. It's definitely movement. <laughs> Your kid should like that. That it is sour for kangaroo, kids. played by Carol Burnett, looks over the shenanigans Horton is causing. Why can't I play with the other kids, Mom? The jungle is no place to act like a wild animal. She'll learn to lighten up and he'll be happy. Can we just skip that one third of the movie now? But a tiny speck flies by and Horton hears a sound from it. The animation cleverly goes hand-drawn to show Horton's imagination oh, and yeah, Seuss's yeah. original style, but unfortunately the rest of the style seems to like action and references for the sake of there just being action and references. I love the smell of bananas in the morning! I feel a deeply bit Oh of yeah, this is weird. To break down. It's just like Robin Williams in Aladdin, except he came in halfway through the film so we could get to know the characters, and this hasn't even been nine minutes yet. Horton catches the speck on a flower, but the kangaroo is not amused! <laughs> no, really, right. she sounds like that. <laughs> Absurd! There aren't people that small. What if there were someone way out there? She she is kind Look of the... Right How there is nothing on person. that speck! 
As an atheist, it's my job to be offended by that. And then offended by anyone else being offended by anything. But sure enough, there's a whole town of people on that spec filled with people called the Who's. Steve Carell plays the mayor named... A man named McDodd. Wait, what? McDodd. Wait, what? McDodd? 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 McDodd. McDodd. D -O -D -D. You just call him that to rhyme with odd. Who's devoted and fair and a little bit fair. odd. Apparently who's sperm come out of shotgun barrel testicles because the mayor has 96 daughters. Now I'm gonna take a wild guess and say his wife would not look that good after so many births. I True. think this will be a more fitting representation. <laughs> There is, however, Fair one enough. boy in the group, he's the oldest, named Jojo, who the mayor is prepping to take over as mayor. But he never speaks because, get this. And why didn't he speak? Well, I think the lad was afraid if he did, he might let down his dad. Yeah. Clearly I mean... you understand why many children also don't speak. You read a child psychology book, Dr. Seuss? Says people? <laughs> Meanwhile, Horton comes across Fair his enough. friend, Seth Rogen. Yeah, they named this character something else, but listen to it. That's awesome, Horton. That uh, yeah. <laughs> Seth Even Rogan. if I said the character's name, all you would hear is Seth Rogen. Watch. Seth Rogen. See? He tells Horton well. <laughs> to keep the spec to himself, but Horton's students... I think the whole teacher thing never comes back with Horton. Accidentally get him to blurt it out. However, Horton's movements are causing big earthquakes in the Who's world because... All of this somehow had no impact. However, this disturbs but the I mayor, mean, who suggests postponing their big Who celebration. Because, you know, they, of course, don't listen to him, them. fearing the rejection Horton is going through as well. But it seems the Who's just want to ignore the problem and spend their time on Who space. Yeah, you see why topical jokes don't always work, Seuss movies? Horton and the mayor finally hear each other, and they try to explain who slash what slash who they are. Your whole world fits on a flower in my world. It's pretty amazing. And if you don't want me to go astronaut from Twilight Zone on your ass, <laughs> yeah. you'll... Eh, yeah, that sounds like fun. Realizing the danger they could be in, the mayor asks Horton to locate them a safer spot to be placed. Horton decides to put them at the top of a mountain, because those are safe as hell. But he decides to do it once again through hand-drawn animation. Oh cool, you mean like in Seuss's original style, like what you did before? <laughs> Our South Park just made fun of anime at the time. I guess we can too. It is clear that you are no match for my technique. Hey! Oh. <laughs> <sighs> Come on, bro. Horton is funny. the greatest hero of them all! Okay, this. Horton! Oh. Yeah. Horton, go! I think this calls for a face palm with a face palm. Mm. You are fast, Horton, but the kangaroo has monkeys! Mm. I will make monkeys of these monkeys. It is their destiny. Huh? <laughs> Nothing to Dr. Seuss even watch anime. Is there a crunchy rhyme? <laughs> about no is that way. Oh, ha, ha. oh my God! Stop! <laughs> Thank you. Please never anything again. Finally, we can get the story back on track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was out of nowhere. <laughs> Give me a break. I need a break. Here's a break. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Uh, I'm just gonna say a few things before we kind of continue here. Um, okay, the other stuff that he's talking about, again, minor nitpicks, but uh, I kind of agree with that. But some of the jokes was really funny for me. For me, I mean, you know, I carry that from from a nostalgic point of view as well. Uh, but more on the. Um, the you know the spec moving throughout everything i think that's more natural for them because in my opinion it is kind of their like it, it'll be very windy for them but i think it's in their ecosystem but when it's on like a like a non-moving thing it, it's gonna be you know really shaky and whatever if you if you do a lot of movement you know it kind of makes sense and that's how I felt the world was built and I really enjoyed that world building um, and Jim Carrey was obviously the second uh, comedy style I was uh, introduced with like the mask and all that so I, I really thought that was really cool um, to see Jim Carrey do this because this is the first kind of animated thing I watched with uh, Jim Carrey in it um, yeah the yellow little furry thing was really weird and I, I didn't understand that but some of the anime things I never watched anime when I was a kid and I never watch anime right now the only anime I watched was uh, Love Yuki but um, 
the anime style in this while some of it was really good i i do understand like some the other parts were not as good because i was like yeah i can see why it's cringy um but yeah for the most part i definitely when i was a teenager already i was just like yeah i understand is this for kids it makes sense for them to make some of these jokes as well but as an adult you kind of appreciate the the, the the color and all that i really still like looking back at this like the clips he's using and all that i i really still really enjoy it because it's so pretty it's, it's so good uh, i did i did kind of forget that they used the 2d sketches uh in the beginning i i, I kind of forgot that um but more on this is gonna be the later parts in this movie uh movie is gonna be the i think he's gonna bring up the third act of the movie which i kind of had my own problems with um you know the the whole turning the turning indy 500 thing is gonna be exp like explained by him uh even better from him than me um and i think he's he's gonna bring up the vulture because the the vulture while it's funny you know he is kind of pointless like i'm just like yeah we didn't we didn't need him um i think he's also gonna bring up the the whole like oh the then never believing horton uh or the the mayor of the who's as well so you know that was that's gonna be brought up as well um what else i i just think that um you know it's so good to kind of see him like not having much to say about it because uh, like uh you know usually nostalgic critic is the balls to the walls character and he goes you know super extreme with all of it but he he did say that he doesn't have much to say and it can't carry the uh, full review and this isn't a full review anymore this is kind of his old style um so yeah i i i I think it's fair enough that he's, he's picking on some things and even though I have my own reservations for this movie even I can say yes you know some of it is fairly stupid but I still love the movie nonetheless it, it's still one of my favorite um, animated movies to watch so there you go let's get back to the the review sorry about the ad Horton tries All right, to this, this, to get to the this, mountain as uh, once again, as well. Horton's movement seemed to only affect the environment around the mayor. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's affecting the other people as well. You know Carol Burnett is in this race. She won't like that we're ripping her off. Hmm. He makes it across the bridge and seems to be very happy. I feel really good right now. Maybe it's my new sense of purpose. You know, for a new sense of purpose, he sure does seem to do a lot of stuff with no purpose. <laughs> the kangaroo hates True. that Horton's imagination is spreading to the children, so she decides to send a giant vulture after him. I will only do this for a price. This little kangaroo. Mom! Quiet, Rudy. Mommy's thinking it over. Yeah, I'm so she glad was a bad she's mother. fighting for the children by debating whether or not she wants to sacrifice her own to a vulture. I will take it. No, 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 I'm not done. What the hell was up with that? Yeah. That seemed Fair. bizarrely out of character. She can be mean, but not give up her kid mean. I mean, don't get me wrong, she still says no, but wouldn't it make more sense if she was insulted by that gesture? She seems to just smile and walk away, forcing him to change his tune. In fact, even for his character, it doesn't really fit. He's constantly trying to look scary, but it's revealed he's not as threatening as he appears. In fact, he's kind of a screw-up. So why was this pointless moment of two characters breaking character even in here? It doesn't seem to add anything, it's not very funny, and it doesn't match their personas. Well, it's possible I mean, it makes about knew. as much sense as having... Oh, that's right. They just like pointless shit. Yeah. Isn't that sad, Bill? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very sad. Vulture attacks Horton, resulting in one of my favorite jokes in the movie. I just know he's gonna jump out somewhere. Hello. <laughs> I can't help it. I like it when the movie critiques its cliches before I do. <laughs> He manages to fight him off, but the town finally notices that shit is happening, resulting yeah. in the politicians high up saying nothing is wrong. You sure this is fiction? The mayor finally tells everybody what's going on, though. A giant elephant in the sky! Don't bother looking, he's invisible. <laughs>
Would it sound better if it was a turtle and it was written by Stephen King? <laughs> they obviously don't believe the mayor, and the flower is taken away before he can prove Horton is really around. Like in the book, it's dropped into a gigantic field of flowers, oh, making it right. impossible to find. This is a really good and visual, exactly by the like way. the book he finds it. I never said the book was flawless. The Who is finally here, Horton, which allows him to do his best John F. Kennedy impersonation. And uh, we will uh, put us back on Mount Newell before the end of this uh, decade. There's a JFK and Dr. Seuss too? You know what, if there's a Who Christ, why am I questioning anything? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Roo finds out, though, and tries to rally everybody behind her. This is Horton we're talking about, you all know him. He wouldn't hurt a fly, except for that fly city he sat on. But he didn't do that on purpose. Huh, so in this version, Horton already killed a town of tiny living things. The crowd rushes towards Horton to take the speck away from him, so all the Who's try to scream to be heard. This leads to a musically and visually creative climax, resulting in yeah, all the various really noises like they can make. And sure I enough, also Jojo enjoyed this. just happened to yeah. create a device in its off time to make the loudest noise in town. Yeah, sure. And Jojo, of course, I mean, sounds off the final sound, speaking for the first time, you know, breaking the hobby. sound barrier. I don't know. But the animals finally hear it, and the kangaroo's son saves them and brings the flower back to Horton. Yeah! Yeah, there's punk rock in Dr. <laughs> Seuss, too. I don't care. Horton apparently is nice enough to even forgive the kangaroo. Yeah. It's the least I can do for attempting mass genocide. What are we gonna do without you, Horton? I'll always be around. And even as I wonder... Oh, and in the last five yeah. minutes, we decide to become a musical because our identity's not strong enough to say we shouldn't. We zoom out and see a whole universe of beautiful specks. And this butt ugly thing. What even was the joke with that? Don't tell me. I don't want to see it again. <laughs> Horton, here's a who? I hear a middle of the road shrug. Yeah, the bad stuff isn't enough. nearly as bad as the other Seuss films, and once in a while there is a funny and or creative moment. But it tries too hard to hit too many demographics, resulting in a weak experience, but not necessarily a bad one. It's not painful, it's just kind of confused. You can feel the pressure from studios, producers, and what have you trying to make this something distinct and instead turning out something kind of underwhelming. Still, I think kids can watch it fine. There's no yeah. real bad lessons in it, at least if you don't think too hard about them. I guess in hindsight, it is the best Dr. Seuss movie ever made, but given his other films, that's not exactly a high point. Yeah, it is what it is, true. a middle-of-the-road flick. And compared <clears throat> to the other Seuss films, I'll gladly take that any day. Yeah, this is this is really fair. Um, I I'm thought it was going to talk guy, more remember, about so the, you don't have to. the monkeys who... I thought it was like... <laughs> I fucking knew it. Um, I thought he was gonna talk about the monkeys, which I thought, you know, was uh, gonna be more about um, because it was in the third act, and it kind of a, got a bit of a bit annoying, and you know they they kind of you know slid in some um, racist anagrams in there, you know, subtleties to try to push it in, uh, but. I was just like, well, we didn't, we didn't need this, um, but yeah, for the most part, I, I definitely understand why he said he didn't really have much, but I guess because it's his 10th anniversary, he just wants to get everything out, you know, whatever he didn't want to review, he's gonna review now. Um, I actually wanted to see him tackle, like, Gulliver's Travels and of those other movies that I, I, I actually enjoy because you know when I was a kid I, I, I don't know anybody uh, and Harden Hears Who is, is one I, I watched and I was like yeah it's, it's fine I remember watching The Grinch when I was really really small and I, I don't really remember The Grinch uh, I remember watching Cat in the Hat uh, and you know, during that decade, Paris Hilton was re really, really hot thing, and I was like, you yeah, know, Paris Hilton, ah, it is the thing. Um, but rewatching Cat in the Hat was the biggest mistake I made in my adult life. <laughs> I was like, oh no. <laughs> um, um, and yeah, you know, all these um, Seuss 
the Zeus canon or the Zeus cinematic universe isn't really big, you know, it's just uh, canon had Grinch and, and Hart and Here's Who and, and Lorex. Uh, I thought Lorex was just really animated, animated well and I thought Betty White was fine in it, uh, but the other stuff was just stupid. Um, especially the the um, fish things like I didn't know at the time what they were satirizing and then I watched Despicable Me and I was like oh and then it all clicked and <laughs> so yeah uh, I thought he would have a bit more you know jokes to do with like there was one scene in Heart and Here's Who where he's you know when he's on that bridge and he has to you know blow himself up to kind of fly and I thought that was this that's the stupidest thing but also kind of really funny because watching an elephant do that is really stupidly awesome this is like and then he, he can like float a bit and i was like what the fuck is happening um and then of course the ending with the the gorillas i definitely agree with the the vulture it was, it was really pointless for the vulture to be there because i'm just like well we, we didn't need the vultures if she's already gonna go to the the apes as well so there you have it um, anyway, that's about it guys. Uh, I really enjoyed nostalgic, uh, this Nostalgia Critic Mini Review. I I'm, I'm gonna do uh, more reactions on his newer stuff. Uh, if you guys want me to do on his older stuff, I have to bring in my older friend. I mean my my friend as well. Because he hasn't watched a lot of nostal nostal Nostalgia Critic uh, because you know he, he hasn't consumed uh, much YouTube as I have. Um, but yeah, I, I I have watched all his old stuff. Like you know, you you name it, I've watched it. So it's not really worth it for me to watch. You know, all this, all the old stuff. Uh, I even wanted to do Yogi Bear, but I kind of watched it without you guys. So I'm just like, yeah, I don't I don't want to kind of repeat what I did because you know, there's an art to raw reactions and. I, I just want to keep that for my channel because I, I really enjoy that and hopefully you know playing it off my friend I, th I think you know I, I, I can really just relive you know through him uh, so yeah thank you guys so much for watching if you like this video please leave a like uh, if you want to see more please subscribe to me and if you like to criticize me please leave a comment or if you like to say anything please leave a comment uh, if you would like to, you know, support me more, please ring the bell and also consider uh, donating, contributing to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Walter. And remember to share my videos so that we can get on top of YouTube. Um, and just remember that uh, the original link will be in the description below. Please go and support Channel Awesome. They're really cool guys. Uh, you know, I, I can only aspire to be like them but you know I don't think I have the skills you know or the or the know-how you know I've just picked up some stuff and gone yeah you know and actually to be fair nostalgia critic got me really passionate about movies and, and I think you know I, I owe him a lot so yeah thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video see you then